So bottom line here, we shouldn't be shaming ourselves or others for the food decisions that we're making. Hello YouTube friends, today I'm reviewing some things that my editor has pulled together from social media, some comments and memes about alternative burgers, so plant-based meats, and I'll be reacting to them. Let's see what we've got. Vegans shaking hands with non-vegans, something we can all agree on. And then it's got this comment, I'm far from vegan, but this Beyond Burger meat be hitting. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't had Beyond Burger meat like isolated. Um, I personally am more of a fan of Impossible, but whatever. We can talk about that later. I love Beyond Meat burgers, but the sausage patties, meatballs, and sausage links are crazy addictive. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't like that language when it comes to food because you, you can't be addicted to food. Yes, it can be really good. It can hit that bliss point and just be like, mm, yes, but it's not addictive. So I hate that that's sort of perpetuated through comments and things on the internet, but they're probably just trying to say it's good. I'll, I'll give them that benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Okay, good, but why so many chemicals? Ugh! And bring your jerky to my area, please, lol. What? Are you both a fan and not a fan? I don't know what's going on in that comment. But you guys, everything is made of chemicals. Everything. And when you break down what beef is, like, it sounds really bad. If you actually discuss beef and its chemical components, it sounds just as bad. But they aren't regulated the same way as meat analogs. And I am vegan and they're the best. Again, I'm more partial to impossible burgers, but whatever. <laughs> Beyond meat is super delicious. She sounds <laughs> Okay, people on the internet is, um, yeah, this is literally a person who drinks, so thank you for that. I love Beyond, but please switch out the canola oil. Why? Why? <laughs> okay, I could see it maybe being less realistic of an oil to use because you're not going to find fat or lipid in beef that is like canola oil, it would be, in my guess, more akin to something like coconut oil because you've got more saturated fats in there. But like, if they're good, it's probably because of the ingredients they're using. Just saying. When people want food scientists to switch ingredients out, it actually tends to have more of a collateral effect on the overall quality of the food than you might imagine from say a simple switch and like taking out the canola oil. It has more repercussions than you might think and obviously they have to redo all of their labels and all of their, their everything to accommodate something like that. So I don't know, when I see things like that, requests like that I should say, like, it's not that it's bad or wrong for them to want it out, but I just want to know their why, but whatever. I find Beyond Burgers are closer to lean, rare meat than most other burgers. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wish it was organic. You guys! There's nothing really special about organic. Like, at least nutritionally, there's no real benefit to having things organic nutritionally, which that may not be what they're going for because it is like, you know, a vegan market. They tend to like things organic. A lot of times things essentially are organic and they just haven't gone through all the hoops to get those labels. So it's whatever. <laughs> I feel like I should clarify there maybe like, it's a lot easier for farmers to farm quote unquote organically or be very close to that without actually having an organic label. You have to have everything down the line of manufacturing fit their criteria for being organic. That is also a very lengthy process. So even if you are say following the guidelines to 
get your organic label, it can take a few years to actually reach that status to the eyes of consumers. That being said, I'm not sure what Beyond Me is doing, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have some organic ingredients. I really probably shouldn't speak on this because I don't know what their ingredients are, but like, Bottom line, we have to take that organic label thing with a grain of salt because not everything that could be labeled organic is, and there's just a lot of bureaucracy involved with that one. You know those spicy little breakfast patties you got? I got high and lost my- what? Okay, I got high and lost control of myself and ate four. <laughs> now I don't have enough for my breakfast sandwich. <laughs> But I'm getting two boxes next time I shop. We'll let that one stand on its own. <laughs> Makes a good burger, but where's the meat? Did you forget what you bought? Like, um, I don't even understand this one. Like, are they trying to make a joke? Like, they do know they didn't buy beef, right? I, I don't know. Okay, I love that it's good for the planet. Who knew that cow farts destroy the <laughs> Who knew that cow farts destroy the ozone more than every plane, train, and auto combined? <sighs> you guys. I really hate it when people reduce like the manufacturing of cows and that impact on the environment to cow farts. Yeah, no, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about everything that goes into cow production. And that is everything from growing what they're going to eat, transporting that food, transporting the cows. So it is actually including some transportation in this because there's a lot that's involved in raising cows and also the slaughter of cows because that's rarely done in the same place these days. So you've got a lot of shipment involved and you've got a lot of land clearing involved just so your cows have enough space to roam which then decreases how many plants are in the same holding space. Granted there is also farming where the cows are allowed to be in the plants that are being grown. And of course their poo in that case is used as a natural fertilizer, which I think is fantastic to sort of symbiotically use cows for other farming. But that's not what the vast majority of cattle farming looks like. So there's a lot behind the scenes, so to speak, that does really add to greenhouse gases. It ain't all cow fart, just saying. Better for the animals, you're not killing them. <laughs> that definitely makes it better for them. Um, this is the best burger. Knowing you're not biting into a formerly abused then slaughtered animal makes it even more delicious. I'm glad I'm able to buy a 10 pack for $16.69 at Costco. This sounds like an advertisement. Beyond Sausage and Beyond Chicken are great too. Okay, is this, is this someone who got paid off to like make a good comment? <laughs> I don't know. But okay, we do have guidelines for humane slaughtering, which I do realize is in itself an oxymoron, but we don't like really abuse our animals before they are eaten. And the reasons for that are quite selfish, I will admit, because we want the quality of the meat to be as high as possible. And if the animals are abused or distressed in any way, that does actually affect the quality of the meat that gets to consumers. So although it's very, it's very arguable because we are raising them to die. So from like a vegan's point of view, like, there is no humane way to do that, but farmers do actually have to follow very strict rules on how they treat their animals, and there's a very strict process of how they get slaughtered. And it's all designed to help cows feel safe and comfortable up to their last breaths. 
I wish I remembered the lady's name. There's actually a lady who specialized in like how animals feel and she designed, like she upgraded the process for the US on how to make slaughterhouses feel as comfortable to cows as possible. And um, yeah. Stop the excessive plastic packaging. It is against what you promote and sell. I buy the ones from form Costco. Way too much plastic. Okay. That is real though, honestly. Like, I do wish that they had a plastic also made from plants because that has gotten quite sophisticated at this point. Like that would really, I think, tie the loose ends on their consistency and branding, but who knows? Maybe that's in the works, but maybe it's not because a lot of companies are either targeting vegans or targeting people who want to be environmentally friendly. And there's huge overlap there, obviously, because some people, a lot of people are vegans for the environment and not just the animals or their health or whatever reasons they may have. That being said, I do think they would have a larger consumer base if they switched over. So who knows? Like I would predict that it is close down the road for them, but we'll see. Most unhealthy junk on the planet. Cite your sources, Edward. Like I, okay. I'm not gonna say that it would be the most healthy thing on the planet. Just like it's not healthy to fixate on any one food and put it on a pedestal, but it's not the most unhealthy junk on the planet. And I don't know, I feel like I have guesses as to why you might think that, but they're not grounded in facts. Let me put it that way. Use real meat instead of something made in a lab. Do you realize what the point of their company is? because they're trying to not use real meat. If you wanna buy real meat, that's still in the grocery store. They're not taking that away from you, but they're giving other people another option, which I personally appreciate as someone who cannot eat beef. So there is a valid consumer base for this. Like, that's fine for you. If you want something that's not made in a lab, go buy something that's not made in a lab but that doesn't inherently make it better or worse. Beyond Italian sausage with Just Egg. Can we just talk about Just Egg for a second? Why are they called Just Egg? I think it's supposed to be like justice and eggs, like justice for eggs, but like you literally don't have egg in your product. Don't call it Just Egg. <sighs> Not surprised, now we just need impossible bacon and impossible salami, please. Oh, yes, yes, I am down for that, please. That would be amazing, because, oh, and maybe like impossible pepperoni to go on pizza. That's like very, very hand in hand with salami, but any or either, all of them <laughs> would be great. Plant-based is supposed to be better for you, but check the sodium level. It's often very high, making it unhealthy. You guys, sodium is necessary for your survival. It's not inherently unhealthy. If it's high in any one food, if you're eating intuitively, you will naturally balance your sodium with the other foods that you are eating. If you're not eating intuitively and you're eating a bunch of salted stuff. Yeah, that could be problematic over time. But by eating one food that's high in sodium, it's not going to affect your overall levels. Your body is smarter and more adaptive than that. And also, is the sodium level fluctuating? Like, have you seen different sodium levels on their different packages of the same meat? Because that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> they should be the same exact labels. But if you have issues with higher sodium levels, or if you have, say, high blood pressure, that's something that you should keep in mind when looking at different options. But it doesn't make or break the food product, and it doesn't make it a bad or unhealthy choice for you. It just means you need to balance out your other foods. Five out of nine of my cousins age less than 11 year old prefer impossible nuggets over costco brand chicken nuggets in a blind taste test and couldn't discern which was real chicken i'm not surprised honestly because chicken nuggets 
don't have the texture of chicken meat because it's so processed. That being said, I like this person. I wanna do blind taste tests with my nieces and nephews because my cousins aren't that young, you know, same thing. Oh, that sounds fun. I actually like really look forward to doing blind taste tests with my children, but obviously because my one daughter is six months old, it's gonna be a while. These look great, but I've been hoping for a vegan product that uses healthy oils. What kind of sunflower oil is in your product? Please, as not all of them are good for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lisa, what? Like, okay, have you really like looked up your different kinds of sunflower oils? Because they aren't really often separated and they're probably just using all of the oil extracted from sunflower that's what is on their product let me break this down in a way that i hope will make sense and be valuable there are a lot of different lipids they're characterized by their tail length as well as the different bonds between their carbons but we need most of them for our overall health and well-being like you shouldn't just focus on very specific lipids in your diet because we need all of them. We need that diversity, which is why, at least in my opinion, they exist in the first place. So I don't think this is something you should really be fixating on or concerned about. The only time you may need to be concerned about what kind of oil someone is using is if you have a severe allergy to the source because if it's not refined enough there will be traces of protein in your oil that could cause an allergic reaction otherwise you're golden you're fine you need those fats in your diet in order to thrive and be healthy Looks tasty, but please don't call this beef. It is nothing like it. Call it how it is. Hashtag veggie patty. Okay, honestly though, impossible foods, like their faux beef is like really good. That is the best fake beef I have ever tried. And it gets really darn close to the texture and it even bleeds when you make it. Like it's so close. I don't understand why they're having a problem with this to each his own. Like lots of people have issues with what products are called. And I personally don't understand why because consumers tend to be aware of what they are buying. So like if you try it and don't think it's like beef, then then sorry, but not sorry. Like they, I think they should be able to call it whatever they want as long as it's clear that it's impossible foods like it's not beef and people know that it's very clear on their packaging that it's a plant-based beef so no one's going to get confused that it isn't beef and therefore i don't feel like it matters whether or not it's plant-based beef or like what else are they gonna call it plant-based faux meat that is resembling beef like <laughs> It's a lot more simplified to just say plant-based beef. I think people get the fact that it's not beef from the plant-based part, but whatever. I'll give it a try, but to be honest, I don't like when the taste is so close to real meat. <laughs> okay, I feel like, I feel like a lot of vegans feel this way and I've talked to several who do because it makes them scared that they are eating something they don't want to be eating. And having gone so long without very similar imitation products, I understand that because it does feel like crazy close. I love how that is totally like contradictory to the comment we just read. <laughs> Bit misleading to advertise no antibiotics or hormones, which implies meat does which in New Zealand, it doesn't. Actually, it's not misleading by our governmental standards to claim those things, because unless you're pointing out another similar product on your packaging, your packaging is a standalone thing as its own product and advertising only its own product. So because this is a fairly new product on the market, it may be beneficial for them to say like, hey, there are no antibiotics or hormones in this because 
it's true for their product and they're introducing people to it. That being said, I see there is a clear connection because people are concerned about, I should say added hormones, because obviously animals do have hormones naturally like we do, but there are no added hormones or antibiotics in our meat products either because those are actually very regulated as well. So for your milk products as well as your meat products, there aren't going to be antibiotics in there. I know people are concerned about like the animal getting sick and then those antibiotics that they're given ending up in our food stream. And that's not true because any sick animals are taken out of the production lines, both for dairy and meats until they are well, and then they return to being milked or being killed. This is not beef or meat bit of false advertisement. Do people gloss over the plant-based? Like, they are clearly saying this is plant-based meat or plant-based beef. And they're doing that on purpose because they have a very specific target market. So if you missed that, I, I wanna know how. We're skipping the animal to make meat from plants directly. No compromise on taste and no need to compromise the planet. We'd love to hear what you think if you give it a try. But there's no meat in plants. Is there information available for how you process this? Just sort of an interesting thought here. I find it funny that people are so concerned about the processing behind this because it's not like these same people are also sitting down to research how cows actually form their own meat. Like, what is the process on a chemical level, since that's what people are interested in, and how they actually grow muscle and what their muscle is comprised of. That's not something people generally can answer, even though they're concerned about the plant products that are sort of parallel to them. Thanks for following up, Cassandra. Truthfully, most things we eat are prepared through a process. Yes, thank you. I.e. a combination of nature and science, including many simple or healthy foods. I love that they put them in quotes. Foods such as bread, applesauce, and yogurt. Impossible products are, pro are produced by combining carefully selected ingredients to create something we think is extraordinary. You can learn more in our blog here. Okay, so I love how they kind of tell her that, um, but they also really don't answer her question. <laughs> um, I, I, I am wondering now what is in their blog, but I don't want this video to be five years long. Ew! That's so gross! They put a burger in a donut. Okay, for, for, for full disclosure, I don't like donuts. I never have. I think they're disgusting, but that's me. Is this something people would actually like? Oh, trading meat for a plant-based patty doesn't make fast food healthier. So that's what, is that what they're trying to say? Like, that looks so gross, you guys. That looks so gross. <sighs> but I would need to see a very controlled study with several groups who are assigned either solely eating beef patties, solely eating plant-based meats, or, you know, a control group in order to actually feel like I know whether one is healthier, quote unquote, than the other. In my mind, there may be an ethical difference for sure, but there's not a health distinction between the two options. We know that there are more saturated fats present in beef, which have been linked to greater risks for your heart. Some of these plant-based meats have those saturated fats and some of them don't. And at least from what I've seen, they generally have lower levels. So that's a pro for them. But all in all, I feel like I would need to see actual studies to determine which would be quote unquote healthier but they're both viable options. Fast food in general, like if you have to eat it, like don't feel bad for that as an option. Be glad that you're nourishing your body in whatever capacity is available to you. That being said, if it's not your only option, absolutely include other things in your diet. Try to include as much variety as possible and don't guilt yourself over whether or not you're eating a plant-based burger or a beef burger, okay? We clear good. Oh my gosh, I hate it when people do this. Okay, 
Beyond Burger. Water, pea protein isolate, expeller pressed canola oil, refined coconut oil, cellulose from bamboo. Ah, nice. Methyl cellulose, potato starch, natural flavor, maltodextrin, yeast extract, salt, sunflower oil, vegetable glycerin, dried yeast, gum arabic, citrus extract, ascorbic acid, beet juice extract, acetic acid, succinic acid, modified food starch, and natto. Honestly, I see nothing wrong with that ingredient label. Beef. Okay, <sighs> just a few things here. Beyond Burger has to say all of those ingredients because they're regulated by the FDA. Beef doesn't because they're regulated by the USDA and they are controlled by completely different regulations. So if beef were actually listed out as all of the things that are technically in it, you're going to have just as long a list as you would in Beyond Burger if we listed both into their chemical components. For instance, for the Beyond Burger list, you have things that are listed both in their like common name as well as their scientific names. But if you did the same for beef on a chemical level, you're going to have all sorts of things in there like aldehydes and ketones lactones, hydrocarbons like your lipids that we were talking about earlier. You're going to have acids, alcohols, all sorts of chemicals, quote unquote, in there that look just as horrible on a label, horrible, if you were to make a side-by-side -side comparison. It doesn't inherently make either of these options less healthy. I hate that like people are trying to make a statement with this because it also inherently is using the argument that if you have a longer ingredients label, it makes it worse for you or unhealthy or whatever they're trying to say, when that's also not true. You have to look at the quality of your ingredients. And much like with beef, you have to look at the quality of your cow's life. What are they eating? What? How often are they drinking? How much exercise are they getting? What is actually that quality of the meat and the muscle that you're consuming? So bottom line here, we shouldn't be shaming ourselves or others for the food decisions that we're making. And just because you don't understand what is on your ingredients label doesn't make it inherently bad. Unless you've gone to school for chemistry or food science or nutrition or something and you actually know what each of these ingredients is doing functionally and nutritionally in your food, you really shouldn't be worried about it. And those who have gone to school for those things know that they shouldn't be worried about it because they do have functional and nutritional purposes. So go out there and eat food and don't worry about it. We could all use a lot less stress when it comes to our food decisions. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to know in a future video. See you next time.